who's going to win long term, who will have the best models, and which will be the most market share, these closed models or open source models? I think in the future, majority of AI work is going to be based on open source models. I would say like 80% of all like, you know, AI inferencing or like, you know, people building AI applications is going to be based on open domain models. And like some, some of those will be like fully like open domain. Some of them could be open domain, which are sort of supported by enterprises, you know, and, and, you know, that's sort of like really how the industry has progressed over the last like two decades. It's just really hard to beat open source. This Week in Startups is brought to you by Open Phone. Create business phone numbers for you and your team that work through an app on your smartphone or desktop. Wist listeners can get an extra 20% off any plan for your first six months at openphone.com slash twist. Lemon.io. Need to speed up your product development without draining your budget? Hire vetted engineers from Europe at lemon.io. Go to lemon.io slash twist to get 15% off for the first four weeks. And GELT. It's time to take control over your taxes. Discover how GELT can help you to manage and optimize both your personal and business taxes. Visit joingelt.com slash twist now. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the program. Today on the program, we've got Arvind Jain. He is from a company called Glean. What is Glean doing? Well, we're going to find out today. They're trying to get corporations, enterprises, to use AI to help them sort, make sense of, and search their data. We'll hear all about it from Arvind. Arvind, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. So tell me, what are you building and why is it important? So think of Glean like, you know, Google or ChatGPT, but inside your company. It's a product where people can go and ask any questions they have. And Glean will use all of your company's knowledge and data and information to answer those questions, you know, to you. So that's what our product is. Uh, we are a AI powered search engine. We are an AI powered assistant that helps people get more work done. Got it. And so you're not asking the chat GPT, for example, to answer questions or make a marketing plan. This is specifically to search the data inside your enterprise. That's right. And ask questions against it. So I see on the site, you mentioned every department that any company could have sales and, you know, marketing, etc. Which categories, what's the beachhead market? Where are you being the most effective for your customers? So typically, Glean gets deployed company-wide. Typically, Glean will sell to CIOs. Our top users do tend to be engineers, uh, support people, uh, folks in sales. Like Those are the three biggest user populations you know, that we have. But, but in general, like this is a product that actually is useful to every single employee in a business. And therefore, we don't go and uh, sell the product to individual departments, we typically go and sell through the CIO. Ah, so the CIO is l- evaluating new technologies and saying this is going to go across all the verticals in the organization, we need a solution to ask questions in every department. That's right. Well, that means you're going up against, I, I assume, like Intercom, HubSpot, Zendesk for support then. So or are you sitting on top of those systems? We typically sit on top of those systems. Think of like Glean as, you know, an assistant, like it's a layer, it's a connective tissue that connects your knowledge um, across all of your different systems. So while you may be using uh, Intercom or Zendesk as your as your customer CRM and your support people use that as a system of record, but when they have a case that has come to them, so they'll open the case in, in Zendesk or Intercom and now they need to actually resolve it. To resolve that, we're going to actually help them you know, find the right answers. And, you know, sometimes those answers may be in knowledge articles in Zendesk, but sometimes they may be, you know, answers that are in some Slack conversations or in some internal Jira, you know, issue. And, uh, and sometimes, you know, the answers are with people like, you know, that you can actually go and so Glean will actually help you find those people or that knowledge that sits outside of those systems and help you answer those questions. So it's sort of like, you know, give me like, what's the best example? Well, I mean, like, let's say that, you know, there is a, as a support agent, um, you know, somebody files a request that my product has stopped working for some reason. And like, you know, what would have happened is that like, maybe there's a new re- release that got rolled out and there's a bug in that. And right now people inside the company are actively discussing, you know, that issue in, in some Slack channel. It has not made it, it made its way into your knowledge articles yet. 
So when when you get a re, you know request you know from your customers, you know you like we'll actually quickly help you tap into like you know hey is this like has, has other people run into it and like other conversations you know inside the company that would help you sort of figure out a quick answer you know back for your customer. How do you deal with the fact that a lot of this data um, is confidential and maybe not everybody in the organization should see it? There's permissions in each of these systems, but you're going to index the whole thing. So somebody could ask about salaries in the company or, you know, different things. The language model has been trained on all this data. I assume mm-hmm. you're yeah. training your language model on all this. What, what LLM are you using? Yeah. So, so first of all, like, you know, we are um, LLM agnostic. So we can work with uh, GPT-4 or Gemini or, you know. Which one are you, you using know, right now? Topic. We use all of them. So use all of them. Like typically we let customers make a choice, like, you know, oh, what, really? what language models, you know, they would like to use. Um, Which one do now, they pick most often? Actually, like most of the times they will, you know, give back the choice to us. So like, you know, we get to choose. I think right now we started out with, you know, I think majority of our deployments right now are using GPT-4. And with GPT-4, when you put that data in, how do you know if the model is the 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 GPT four model by OpenAI assures you that the customer data does not go in there, or do you have it off prem? How do you manage that issue with the language models? Because a lot of CIOs and CEOs are really concerned about giving OpenAI their data to train it on. Yeah. So so see, like you know, you, you're absolutely right. Like if you think about using AI in the enterprise, first of all, your data inside the company like has first of all, it's private to you as a company. But second, within within the company, you know, there's governance on that data. Like, not every employee can actually use, you know, all the information that exists within the company. So, Glean actually solves both of those problems. So, number one, you know, we're not actually training or fine tuning models like GPT-4. We're actually using them only as summarization and synthesis engines. The way our product works is that, you know, when you come and ask a question, and you're one of the employees in a company, what we will do is, you know, first, you know, based on that question, we're going to use our core search technology. And we'll assemble the right pieces of knowledge and information that we think is going to be able to, you know, sort of answer that question that you have. And and we will actually restrict you. So like we know who you are and what content you have permissions for. So we'll only let you use the information that you are actually individually authorized to use. Now, once you've actually gathered, you know, this information safely, now we will actually take the snippets of this information and ask an LLM like GPT-4 to summarize that information. Do you trust OpenAI? So we so we actually work with uh, Azure, um, you know, to use GPT four, uh, and and the way we you know we work with these model providers um, is that we we have a contract with them where you know our customers are guaranteed full privacy, you know, for their data, like their data is never logged outside of their own clean environments, and 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 Azure or Google don't have the ability to actually go and you know train any models on that data. So, so yes, our customers get full um, assurance. So you trust them with that function because a lot of CIOs have been a little bit concerned watching some of these. Uh, you may have seen, did you see the viral video of the CTO of OpenAI talking about Sora last week? And she couldn't answer the question of like what training data was there and she wasn't sure. And it, it kind of felt like she was lying, I think, based on most people's thing there. So it does seem to me like the big challenge here, you tell me if I'm wrong, is that using these third party models, even even on Azure or Google Cloud, people are nervous, are people nervous about that? And they want to move to having say an open source one on prem and or just, you know, in their own cloud? Well, see, like, you know, different customers are a different level of sort of both paranoia and security requirements. A lot of the companies today, a lot of enterprises are now comfortable with storing their enterprise information in the big in the big cloud vendors like Google or Microsoft or AWS. Um, a lot of like you know business technology and systems run in these systems, and you know so the trust level you know for these you know the the big three cloud providers is actually quite high. Uh, and if you think about it, like you know like see AI is a new thing. You know first of all already like my business data is you know is in these systems, right? And so now, you know, I'm also using some additional like AI models again hosted, you know, within Google or Microsoft as well. So, so as long as like, you know, I get those VPC controls, uh, I'm actually comfortable with that. So that's sort of like most of the customers feel that way. And if you don't trust Google or Microsoft, then, then of course, like, you know, you know, then you typically are, uh, running everything on premises and 
and we like as a as a company like we support like also like hosting models ourselves so if if a, if a customer wants to use an open domain based model um as 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 the core llm you know that's you know in their clean experience you know we also allow them to do that yeah i mean there was a big instance of a bunch of samsung employees i guess using chat gpt4 mm -hmm. and then their source code and and other information yeah. was then trained into chat gpt4 i'm sure you've seen that and i'm i'm guessing that comes up with cios that, can you explain what happened there yeah so in in that particular instance um the employees in the company they were actually like you know using the standard chat gpt product and they were actually pasting you know uh, their code inside of that like you know code or sensitive you know documents within the company you were posting that you, you know within that chat gpt interface and then asking you know chat gpt to do, do some work on it and and so when you actually use these services directly like these are meant to be consumer services if you use them directly you don't have any controls like you know every you know data that you actually put in that system like you know like open ai you know has you know like you know is allowed to actually go and like train their future models you know using that information on the public interactions right the on the public interactions and that's what happened there the way to sort of you know make sure that you know you are not you know exposing your private data as a cio like you know to ensure that your employees are not sending information you know to these public consumer based products and that's that's when you use a product like clean because if you use clean you know now you have a very safe and secure environment you know where people can still go and ask questions and 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 we will make sure that like you know any information that is being sent you know to azure or to google like is actually following you know that contract and that security uh, agreement that you have with you know from them that they're not going to use that information to train in, uh, yeah Juggling multiple devices and apps to run your business is a mess. Open Phone is here to make it simple by simplifying your business communications with one easy to use app. Open Phone has rethought every detail of what a modern business phone should be. And here's the magic. It works through a beautiful, elegant app on your phone, or you can just use it on your desktop, making it super easy to get a business phone number for your entire team. And you know how brilliant Open Phone is? My teams use it every single day. My sales team loves it. My ops team, they use it all day long. And here's the features that we love. You can create a shared phone number like customer support with multiple employees fielding all the calls and all the text to that one number. At my investment firm launch, we pride ourselves on replying to every every single call or email instantly. And Open Phone is the number one rated business phone on G2 for customer satisfaction. So here's your call to action. Super easy. Open Phone is already affordable. Starts at just 13 bucks a month. But Twist listeners get an extra 20% off any plan for the first six months at openphone.com slash twist. And if you have existing numbers with other services, no problem. Open Phone's going to port them over easy peasy, lemon squeezy, no extra cost. Head over to openphone.com slash twist to start your free trial and get 20% off. How do you compete against the the native tools, mm -hmm. you know, getting more and more robust? So mm -hmm. you can't possibly write an LLM that's going to work as good as, you know, the one that's built into, you know, Salesforce eventually. Does, does Salesforce build in a language model yet or no? So, so typically, like, you know, companies like, you know, SaaS companies like Salesforce or Atlassian, or, you know, or, or, you know, any of these systems, they're not building language models. Language models are built by... No, 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 but they're building yeah. language models into their product. So, and you're not building language models either, right? Well, so, so it's, it's complicated. So, so we, we build language models. We build smaller models, you know, to sort of, you know, build semantic understanding of your company knowledge. But, but we, as well as Salesforce and, um, and you know, like other, other product, SaaS product companies, all of us use, you know, APIs to you know you know uh, to these large language model providers like gpt4 or gemini to do some work so typically in in that model what happens is that you know you're basically sending prompts to uh, to these models and you know having these models do some work on that prompt and return back a response and 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 you sort of create these ai experiences within your application so now to think about like you know if, if you think about you know salesforce uh, they're going to actually have some ai features within their product um you know, Coda will have some features within theirs. Jira will have some. So yes, yeah, so you're right that you know every application in the future, you can imagine that they will have some AI smarts, right? They like might even move to the chat interface, right? 
um you know and yeah they may have a chat interface in addition to actually do some some of the work that you know people do with those products for example you know today like if you want to create a new issue in jira like you like typically you'll go in that in that app and click a button and then fill a form but you can imagine that yeah they may have a they, they may have a chat interface you know that allows you to sort of go and you know create that you know new issue using a natural language interface so yeah so those things may happen in the future but but that's not like you know what what glean is actually solving for like you know glean is you know solving a different problem which is that if you think about your work inside a company it happens you know across many different systems like you know i'll give you one uh, user journey as an example as a, as an engineer let's say i have to actually go and build this new technical component and so that journey for me is going to start with first talking to people i'm going to be actually having some conversations like this one like you know on zoom i'm going to be talking to some other engineers talking about design choices i may have some conversations in slack you know we'll be talking about like hey like what about you know this approach versus that approach is actually a you know a jira which actually tracks why I, why am i even building this technical component what 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 were the problems that we're trying to solve then so you know first like you have all of these different things then like at some point i'm going to actually write a design document like maybe in google drive to sort of describe my design and then later on i'm going to actually write code and that's going to go in github and so if you think about like this whole journey all the information about this project like it actually spanned all of these different systems so now think about like you know 6 months down the line somebody comes and asks a question that hey why did we use you know this programming language you know to, to build this component where is the answer it's not in one place it's actually you get that answer by actually consulting you know all the knowledge that sits in like those five or six different systems and so that that's where the power of glean comes in like if you think about you know your work we are tying together knowledge from all of these different systems in one place and we give you as a user like we remove that burden from you like you know hey where should you go and find things where should you go ask questions uh and so it's a and great place to start if i was joining the company or i'm the yeah. cfo and or the yeah. chief operating officer and somebody tells me about project yeah. bluebird and i don't yeah. know what's going on project bluebird hey give me an overview of project over bluebird and he gives me all those but if right. i'm not the the question i have uh the next question i have there because that's kind of a cool feature to be able to go across yeah. the entire enterprise yeah. so i totally get that but there's a discussion going on in a slack room that i don't have permission to permission yeah. for yeah. so how do you deal with that maybe there's a bluebird project bluebird slack room it's got 20 people in it but yeah. i am the coo i'm the cfo i don't have access to that room i was never invited yeah how do you, but you have that in the llm so how do you let me know that there's a conversation there that i don't have the rights to see because of the way slack works or jira works yeah. like the coo doesn't even have a jira account that's right they're they're not have a git git up account so how do you deal yeah. with permissions yeah so so two questions first of all like you know the way our system works there is no data none of your enterprise data is actually in the llm the llm is basically just the standard you know like language model that is trained on the world's public knowledge uh we're not using it to store knowledge um the but now like the way glean works is that when we actually um connect with all of these different systems we have actually built an understanding of how permission works in those systems so for example when glean connects with slack it knows you know the concept of channels it knows that certain channels are private certain some of them are public if it is private it knows who are the members in those channels so now you know we're going to index every single message or conversation and and we know exactly who are the people who are who have access to it and this is all all of this is information is stored in our search index same for a you know a document on google drive you know we know like you know who are the collaborators on that doc and we store this permissions so and now yeah and and so our our and this is unique about the glean you know technology so it's fully permissions aware now when you come in and ask a question in glean you have to be first of all signed in you have to present to us your identity who you are um and we are able to now you know retrieve documents from the index but only work on the documents that you know we already know that you have permissions for so 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 building that like you know that's part of our core technology is to understand you know like these authentication and permission models in each one of these individual apps and sort of um and make them make them work so like so you know, know Jason the COO yeah. can't see project bluebird no. i'm not in that group so yeah. when i do a search it, it won't show you anything you won't show me anything yeah we But, won't even tell you we won't even tell you that hey there is some useful information 
but we're not like we can't share it with you talk to somebody else because like sometimes right. even that is dangerous like even I letting you know I was about to know. say like let's yeah. say you did a search yeah. who's on a performance improvement plan that's right <laughs> it's like there are seven conversations about performance improvement plans happening with yeah. these people in them with these names and you'd be like uh wait a that's second right. who are the seven people who are in a just the, the fact that yeah. there is a file in and of yeah. itself is I- information that's um, right. and do these you know slack has pretty robust ai coming on board notion and mm-hmm. coda also have ai built in have they built apis into it or are you just having to rebuild all of that from scratch for, against their services or are you doing the search in slack as if i was logged in no, and then getting the returns we do like our we do search natively in our system so the way yeah. our system works is that we bring content from those systems and index them in clean Oh, so as as it. content is being produced as somebody sends a new message we get a notification and we'll then use you know take that message and index that in our system so this is yeah. and this is continuous this is done in real time all the time and now when you come and do a search like that search is entirely served from within our system and Got that's it. important because for two reasons one like you know like you need to be fast like you can't actually in a, in a, in an enterprise you know you will you have 1000 systems you know that you're using you can't actually you know when a user comes and asks a question to you you can't actually send message to all you know hundreds of them and wait for responses to come back yeah, and yeah no search to, right? correlates to search usage correlates directly with the with speed, speed of returns speed, right yeah. that was google's big lesson yeah. right <laughs> that's right exactly if you make then it then faster it, yeah. more people use it more yeah in fact that's 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 one of the things i worked on at google you know yeah. was actually making it fast but the second thing is the second thing is also like search is a hard problem it's sort of like magic like you know you come in you type two words and like i need to sort of now figure out from those 10 million documents the one that exactly you're looking for so this is a lot of work that needs to be done to build a great search and i think like like what we have seen typically is that like each one of these individual saas products like you know they they don't have so many resources to put on search like we have hundreds of engineers yeah. trying to actually make search better it's such a good point right search is like an afterthought for them or they may just yeah. use some open source library they never update their search uh, exactly. you know even like I've been complaining about Twitter search since Twitter was born and there was a third party called Samize that they bought to make their search a little bit better and that was yeah. 10 years ago and because yeah because you because you think about like enterprise uh, enterprise software companies they don't win customers that way like you know in Jira and Asana are competing they're, they're competing on features not by saying that hey my search mm-hmm. is better than yours so so I think that's another thing so like you know to really solve the search problem uh, you have to you have to do a lot more work and also just one more thing you know on on this like you know what why why you know thinking about search in in the way we think is important is really important to sort of take all of your enterprise context and that sometimes gives you signals on like you know both you know what information is actually relevant and important and to whom so one example like let's say that you know somebody writes a there is a document that you know that talks about uh, benefits but whenever somebody asks a question in slack that hey like you know where's our benefits policy like you know somebody in hr shares that document with you so there's a lot of you know like this exchanges that are happening in slack which tells you that hey this particular document is authoritative for that answer ah so and, slack's and, great training data in that way yeah so and then slack just being one example like you know like every if you think about there are these interconnections between like you know how a jira issue was created and how and how it's referenced in a slack conversation so when you think about your enterprise knowledge it's like a it's, a it's a graph like you know there's knowledge there's a lot of different pieces of knowledge and they have all interconnections with them and and similarly there are people and you know and and like people like you know, of course you know there like you you know we're talking about like you know there are engineers there are support people there are sales people and and you know we build these learnings that you know engineers are actually you know you know clicking on this you know or using this document a lot more than sales people and vice versa So all of those learnings you know is is sort of what enables you to find out what is more relevant information for whom and and that's the core of like you know what glean is and that's why it's so important to actually have that full enterprise wide view of your people as well as your knowledge 
right now startups have to do more with less we all know that it's rough out there folks so if you need great tech talent but you don't have the time to interview dozens and dozens of candidates you need to check out lemon.io lemon.io has thousands of on-demand developers to choose from and these devs are vetted experience result oriented and they charge competitive rates great developers can be incredibly hard to find and when you do find them it can be hard to integrate them into your team lemon.io handles all of that for you startups choose lemon.io because they only offer handpicked developers with three or more years of experience and strong portfolios. In fact, only 1% of candidates who apply get in. And if something ever goes wrong, Lemon.io will get you a replacement ASAP. You know what? A bunch of our launch founders have worked with Lemon.io and they've had great experiences, which is always good to hear. Go to Lemon.io slash twist and find your perfect developer or tech team in 48 hours or less. Go to Lemon.io slash twist and find your perfect developer or even a tech team in 48 hours or less. And twist listeners get 15% off their first four weeks. What a deal. Stop burning money hire developer smarter visit lemon.io slash twist what's really great as a byproduct and how don't you can tell me if any of your customers are asking for this there is a concept of compliance yeah. and legal reviews so for example people think like their dms on slack or their emails even if you delete your emails those things are stored if you have the settings done properly like in google docs or microsoft yeah. teams and so because you ingest everything you do have the ability to do a God mode where the compliance could say, mm. hey, did anybody say this? Let's say it's insider trading. You know, did anybody share Project Bluebird? Let's say Project Bluebird was an acquisition. Did anybody say the word Bluebird? And you could mm. actually see across all documents. Yeah. Does that exist like a super God compliance mode? There is, there is a compliance mode which is highly restricted and it's available only to your governance, you know, and legal teams, like, you know, for exactly the use cases like that, you know, e-discovery or, you know, also like for privacy compliance, like for example, you know, a, a big use case, you know, that, that that's out there is, you know, you have a, you know, a, you know, a, you know, previous, like an ex-customer or an ex-employee, you know, who comes and tells you that, hey, you know, delete all my data, right? You know, and then you, you have to sort of, you know, there are laws that actually, require you to do that like you know um and so how do, but how do you even figure out like you know, where is all that information Yeah, where is so, that data facebook yeah. had this issue because facebook had been doing backups of backups of backups right. and that's why when you delete your account people are like oh you know they say it takes 30 days <laughs> i think that's because they have all kinds of mirrors and and right. you know mirror images of data so many different places they yeah. want to be thoughtful and thorough yeah. about it it would seem like a ceo god mode would be one of the, the great features of being able to look across this whole amount of data. And if you're working yeah. at a company, you should just know by default, yeah. anything you do on your laptop is your company's and every email you send, never use corporate yeah. devices yeah. I, to it, it, order it, from Amazon or do private communications. Gosh, it's 2024. I don't know why I have to say this to people, but I'm shocked that people will, I, because I'm on the board of so many companies or investments, some story will come up that people were sending things to each other on slack or teams or doing something on a corporate device that is completely insane that you should not be doing that's right yeah and i think the uh from our perspective like you know we like you know we help companies you know from a compliance perspective there uh, but but glean is actually not a system of records so that's not like you know another system that you have to worry about like in the sense of when you need to delete data for somebody like, you know, you don't have to actually go and explicitly go and delete that in Glean. Um, well, you do have to you know, get rid of the data in Glean if it's indexed, right? Because you have it in the we, index. We stay, we, stay in, we stay in sync with the actual system. So, like, if it's deleted ah. in Slack, it's automatically deleted in our wow, system. Wow, that's super complicated to take care of all that, huh? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's where the complexity is. But actually, it's an interesting thing. Like, you know, you talk about AI, you know, like, everybody wants AI. And, and this is one of the key problems that businesses are running into, which is, like, look, you know, we have all this information in our company. And yes, like, you know, we've set some rules, you know, permissions, but you don't always get it right. Like, you know, oftentimes, mm. you, know, you know, there'll be some document somewhere that like, you know, is sensitive and the person in HR, like they didn't know how to set correct permissions. They made it open to, every, you know, everybody in the company. And then you start living with that, like, because nobody can find anything anyway. So like, who cares? Like, you know, there was a talk <laughs> somewhere that, so, you know, but it's, let me ask it's you, yeah. We know that finished. So I was just, just going to say that, that, so that's a, that's a big issue today. Like, you know, with like AI. Because now AI does all of that work for you. Like, you know, like in this new world, you just get to ask questions, right? Mm -hmm. And and there's this AI, you know, like, for example, our product is connected with all of the company information and it's going to actually answer questions back for me. So it sort of makes, you know, these 
governance gaps, you know, like, you know, you're going to pay for it now. Like, you know, they're going to become a big problem. Problem, And so that's one of the things that we hear a lot from, you know, CIOs, yeah. you know, they, they feel AI is powerful, but they're also scared of it. When you see, um, I mean, you must have seen the Devin demo last week, the, the uh, AI coder going out and like doing jobs on its own. Did you see that last week? The Devin? I, I, didn't, I, I didn't see it, but I've sort of, you know, seen like things like that and, and, and heard discussions about, about it. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, now that you're indexing the whole company, you're yeah. watching all this data and code and customer yeah. support tickets and sales all occurring. It would seem yeah. to me that you understand, you know, what a salesperson does all day what a coder does all day and yeah. and all their activity buzzing around yeah so that's great i mean you understand who the most productive employees are on a certain mm -hmm. level right you could tell me mm -hmm. who's working who's making the most commits and this exists already in jira yeah. but you yeah. know you could tell me hey this person's work hours they work three hours today according to the data we've seen mm -hmm. so is there some idea here of looking at productivity there are certain apps that people are using to monitor their own productivity then there's like people tracking their hours, but it does seem you could tell me, hey, you know, this person hasn't done anything for four days, I guess they're on vacation, or hey, this person is putting in, they're, they're dropping, you know, data yeah. into all these different resources 12 hours a day, they're working 50% yeah. harder than the average person. Well, I mean, so, you know, we have, you know, we didn't start our company, you know, with the goal of sort of building these, you know, analytics, and you know, or like some people analytics in some sense, you know, our, our goal, you know, has always been to help people like get work done faster, like make them more productive. But people and analytics is a really fascinating topic. So it's, a, it is. And it's, so, so, the, the, so the data is there, like, you know, say with or without us, you know, like the, that data is there and you write that, like, you know, when you bring it all together, like, you know, how you build, bring it in clean, you know, like, you know, you know, somebody can actually run those analytics on our platform. Uh, and get and, and and gain insights faster um the but i would say like you know like like we haven't really seen like people talk about it but i think like you know i, th I think they like uh, we haven't seen like you know actual like attempts you know where somebody's trying to actually build report reporting like that you know using the data on our platform you know the the negative interpretation of it is employee monitoring so yeah. you can you can see employee monitoring and then there's employee productivity that's right. And, you know, they, they, yeah. they're just, if you're doing, a, if you're running a call center, yeah. you really need to monitor it because yeah. people might say something stupid to a customer yeah. and somebody who's on a call center yeah. all day, they expect all of those interactions to be monitored. Yeah. Now, a higher level knowledge worker, a sales executive and developer, they don't expect it, but they might very much want to be productive. And so yeah. I know people who run productivity software and you yeah. have it on your iPhone, right? It tells you which yeah. were your most popular apps. Yeah. And I've looked at it a bunch of times and I'm just like, uh, I want this. I know like six people in my organization want it, but I bet there's like 10 who are absolutely paranoid yeah. about like that data being there. But what's important for people to understand is with AI, with a system like Lean or any other system, yeah. the byproduct is your collective work is going to be in uh, a database somewhere, yeah. which means you can really study it and figure yeah. out like, what is this person doing in our organization? Like, do they need to be here? Or do they need a raise? <laughs> Does yeah. this job need to be eliminated? Or do we need 10 more of these people? Or do we need to study this person? That people analytics to me that's, that, yeah, is incredible. I, yeah, I think that's that's really powerful. And actually, like, you know, but but I would say one more thing, which is, you know, today, you know, part of it is that, you know, you can have like, you know, a few people in the company that could sort of do these analytics on an organization wide basis. But part of it is like, what about you yourself? Like, you know, like, you know, you can go and clean today and say like, hey, tell me, you know, where I spent my time last week. Right. And it's going to tell you, like, you know, like if you're meeting a lot, like, you know, like, you know, like, for example, I can ask and clean, like, how many, how many hours of meetings did I have last week? And it has access to that information. It's going to answer that back to you. So part of it is that, that like, you know, like, you know, like, how can we help you as an individual sort of have more insights into your own work? And so that's, so we think more about that, like, you know, from that perspective. And, and like, so like one of, like one of the, one of the very popular use cases or like, popular questions and you know that people ask in glean is like every monday morning they will ask for like summarize you know all the work i did last week you know because they actually need to share because they need to share that information with their manager or with their team like you know post it in like you know they whatever their scrum you know notes so so you can do that in glean and like you know, glean will, you know go through your jiras and your 
GitHub's and your Slack conversations and sort of give you like a really nice summary of what you did last week. Um, so, so there are those analytics um, or summarization that that you can actually bring to each individual for themselves. And and like you know like and you sort of start to like you know bubble up like you know as a as a manager of a team you can ask the same question what did my team do last week and it will actually do it it will do it for you like as a manager you'll you'll be able to sort of get that summary but only with information that you as the manager actually have access to so you could actually like so if there was an employee doing something you know writing you know working on a doc that they're not shared yet with the team you know the manager won't get to see that. Uh, but but yeah so so th yeah so there are use cases like those we are actually you know you know going from the angle of like helping each individual with their work uh, and you know with their own sort of productivity uh, we haven't seen that much of like you know the like what you mentioned which is that there could be yeah an I mean expansion. I have my own yeah. little ways of doing it sometimes yeah. I go into Notion yeah and it will show me I think I'm the administrator is why yeah. it shows it to me all of the changes in the database. Yeah. And I click on it and I see Bianca, Andre, Heidi, yeah. like coming up over and over again, the three people on my investment team. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, they're super product productive inside of Notion all day long. And yeah. I noticed that like, oh, wow, they're really taking good notes. And sometimes I'll just take a look at the document. Now all those documents are public, anybody could look at them. Yeah. But it's really nice to see the pulse of the company, right? Yeah. And then there was this really cool reporting that I got just by opening up Slack's admin to add somebody, it'll yeah. show you how active each person was in the last 30 days. Yeah. So it just shows you like how many messages they sent, yeah. how many they got, and then how many days out of the last 30 they logged in. Yeah. And I was like, shout yeah. out to these, you know, 30% of the company that logged yeah. in, you know, 28, 29, or 30 out of 30 days. Like you can take yeah. a day off from it, but I, I, I've I seen would that never not check my Slack. That to me would be crazy as the CEO. Yeah, I, I, that, that's the one I actually like, like a lot myself. I think it, it does tell you a lot about about the company like you know when you sort of look at these data yeah. or then yeah. you look at the bottom and you're like like one time i was like oh my god this person was logged in like 14 out of 30 days and i was like oh they took two weeks off they had a honeymoon or something totally fine that's the time you want to turn it off right but then other times it's like is that should that person have turned off their slack for two weeks and them or whatever number of days it might be time to have a conversation about that let me ask you mm -hmm. about search you were at google yeah in five years will people be doing search engine searches or will they be doing chat gpt searches mm -hmm. or like you know chat interface searches i'll take open ai mm -hmm. out and i'll yeah. take google out since you work yeah. there search engine versus chat interface and just having yeah. a conversation yeah. which will be the majority yeah of you know users searching for knowledge which will be the majority in yeah. five or ten well, years well i think in five or ten years there won't be two different interfaces there's only one you know because like ultimately, like, you know, what are you doing? Like, you know, you have a question, you need an answer. Sometimes, you know, sometimes your question is about research. Like, you know, you want to read a, read a document actually like in, in response to like what you're looking for. Sometimes, you know, you're looking for a one line. So it'll just move right? to a chat interface. No. We won't be on this like 10 blue links. No, I don't know. I, that's not what I said. Like what I'm saying is oh. the, what I'm saying is that there's only one interface. Uh, but that interface, you know, is, you know, is adaptive, is rich. Like it, you know, takes, you know, what's the kind of question that's coming in and it'll like, you know, appropriately give you the right answers back. If you think about, it, I think, like, I think that there, there isn't actually this dichotomy, like, you know, that, you know, we make off right now. Even in Google, for example, well before, um, well before like this whole generative answers and like the conversational interface, like you could go and ask, you know, in Google, like five years or, you know, from, you know, like five years, you know, back, you could ask the question, hey, what's, what's the temperature? Like in, you know, what's the weather like in sure. Los Santos today? Sports and store, weather, yeah, was, and it, time, it, yeah. so it, currency so it, exchange, stock ticker price, and it just gives exactly. you the answer, right? And it, it, will, it will give you the answers and it will actually also, it will also tell you like, you know, other interesting questions you may actually ask. Like, so, so it was sort of, this is, this has been a progression, right? You know, where I think the, the search interfaces will sort of be like that, where, you know, you're going to understand the intent of the user and what they're trying to look for. Sometimes you can actually give them like you know resources links you know to go and you know where they, they should go and read more details sometimes you're going to see summaries or like you know quick answers on it are you grinding hard to grow your business i bet you are you're listening to this week in startups of course you are but don't let your hard-earned profits slip away because of overpaying on taxes you need to check out gelt G-E-L-T is the secret tax weapon trusted by savvy founders and ceos their elite solutions will transform 
how you handle your taxes. You can integrate your personal and business tax planning with one provider. They have tech-driven efficiency that simplifies tax management and in-house advisors with startup and business expertise. This means no more overpaying your taxes. You're going to save time, and these expert opinions will boost your financial health and help you grow your business. Gelt helps you stay compliant so you can focus on your startup's mission with year-round tax advice, personalized strategy sessions, and a comprehensive tax library for continuous education. When you optimize your tax strategy, you optimize your competitive edge. So here is your call to action. It's time to bring Gelt's elite tax team into your business. Visit joingelt.com slash twist and get 15% off your first year. What a generous offer. Thanks, Team Gelt. Join G-E-L-T.com slash twist to get 15% off. Transform your taxes from a liability to an asset. That's 15% off your first year at joingelt.com slash twist. They had the one box snippets, all the stuff, yeah. but it's going to just move to an answer. So what does that do to the cost per click business model of the internet? Because right now, if yeah. a search engine, I'll just say any search engine, it could be yeah. any of the popular ones, gives you, um, doesn't answer your question, and it forces you to click, some number of people will click the ads because the ads are generally answers to the question, you know, how much... Yeah. Does the latest Volvo have, yeah. you know, is there a convertible Volvo? And it might be an ad for convertible Volvos or used convertible yeah. Volvos. But if we're just going to just answer people, hey, yeah, the Volvo, you know, made four different convertible models. There are one active and these are the three historical ones. Okay, I'm done. I don't click on any of the ads. So what's going to happen to the cost per click ad model over the next 10 years as AI just answers everybody's question? My view is that I don't, th- I don't think like, you know, the model sort of disappear. Already in Google, like, you know, there's a concept of cost per click google always also like you know you know would talk about like cost per conversion there are all these different sort of you know degrees of like you know like how you're actually ultimately driving a sale and like you know you as as you know the sort of facilitator in that like you know what is your cut of you know that transaction so there is you know there are cost per impression there's cost per click there's cost per conversion and so i think like what will happen is that like in the future like for uh, when you ask a question that has commercial intent and there is there are four different commercial parties you know that could actually you know all provide you with an answer they're going to compete and you know like you know the search engine may show like an answer coming from one of them and potentially like you know there is like further follow-ups you know that you take you to those sites and and then you get like you know higher higher uh, so like, there you know, could be a different type of funnel or modality yeah. for monetizing answers so you give the answer about this Volvo. Yeah. And at the end, it says, would you, or, you know, yeah. follow-up questions, w- where can I buy a Volvo? Where's the closest Volvo dealer? Are there any incentives for buying a Volvo? Yeah. Who yeah. can lease me a Volvo? Are they yeah. used Volvos? And all those, yeah. <laughs> if you click them, could include either yeah. cost per click links, or it could put you into a conversation. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's the ultimate. Hey, yeah. what kind of car are you looking for? What's your budget? And then give that lead to yeah. a I local think, Volvo dealer. Yeah. I think if you were to summarize it, like, you know, very, very simply, I think, like, Google is getting paid, you know, because, you know, that's where users are going and seeking those answers. So as long as that stays, that means, you know, they wish they should be getting, you know, their cut off, you know, that. How long were you at Google, Google for? I was there for what years? Uh, I was there from like end of 2003 till 2014. So about like, wow, over, over you were there years. during the early days. You, you, ha- you haven't been there for 10 years. Yeah. So what do you think of all this? Um, you know, brouhaha, this Donnybrook around uh, the Gemini project and all this woke DEI stuff that was included in it. How does something like that happen at a big organization? And what do you think Google's chances are of kind of being able to release product faster? Like, how did it get to this point? Because it did seem like Google was so efficient in the period you were there in just giving us products that solved our problems as consumers. And now it seems like they're doing something completely different. Well, my take on just the AI models first, like, you know, from Google is that I personally feel like, you know, they're actually in a strong position. Um, like, you know, you know, whatever goes wrong in the model, like, you know, they get more attention than anybody else. But if you think about, if you think about Gemini, like actually, it's, you know, it's, it works, you know, it works really well, like as a, as an AI model. Um, you know, they also have, I mean, like, you know, if you think about Google, like, you know, the, they're the best set of engineers, the most AI talent, like by far, even now. You know, they have the world's biggest data centers, they got all the machines, they got all the money. So, so I think the the I think the calls for like, you know, the the doom, like, you know, scenario, I think like it's in my opinion, you know, it's sort of 
like i think it's it's like it's fun for people to talk about but i think like i feel like the company is in a, is, a, is in a really strong position yeah you think they can still win yeah uh, they they, win they, i uh, I, yeah. i think so yeah 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 it just seems like maybe they've got maybe too much process like it used to move much faster right when you when it was a smaller org part of it is yes like you know they need to organizationally make improvements but part of it is also like you know the burden of like success i mean i think about like you know they could not like as 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 a company you know like whose core business is to help you know people find information and correct information like you know like they they were sort of rightfully cautious about like not putting these models you know that hallucinate like in front of people yeah giving uh, giving the wrong answer is really anti google's mission and it does seem like this is why apple hasn't released a ton of ai features is because they also like to have a lot of fit and finish and polish on their products and so, so that's and like in a, an upstart like you know they can they can launch whatever and that is sort of like you know like real, you know in reality like sort of what is like you know like you know cause them to be a little bit on this back seat what do you think is going to win open source elon just open source grok over the weekend obviously facebook and meta all their models are open source uh, apple is working on an open source image uh, editor generative uh, product and even open ai started as open and then went closed who's going to win long term who will have the best models and which will be the most market share these closed models or open source models i think in the future majority of ai work is going to be based on open source models i would say like 80% of all like you know ai inferencing or um, like you know people building ai applications is going to be based on open domain models and like some some of those will be like fully like open domain some of them could be open domain which are sort of supported by enterprises you know and and you know that's sort of like really how the industry you know has has progressed over the last like two decades like i think it's just really hard to beat open source uh, on agree. any on yeah. any technology like the momentum you get you know with it so so that's sort of that's sort of what i feel like you know is going to happen the um the uh, from a who's going to win yeah how far ahead is open ai if at all do you think open ai's 4.0 is much better 10% better how much how, how big is their lead if you were to say in the number of months or quarters and then how soon before open source and you know everybody else catches up or exceeds them yeah yeah, yeah. so on 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 text text based models like i i think i think right now they um our testing internally like you know it feels like you know they're still ahead but the the gap has been closing every quarter and it's actually not significant right now like it's not significant in the sense that i think now like our team for example is is you know continuously thinking about like you know we need to actually use you know the smaller faster models because you know like you know like you know because they're faster because they're cheaper and because you know like the you know it's sort of like you know how you design like you know sometimes you can like you know like if you make 10 requests and like sort of triangulate do you know interesting things you can actually get a better response and like making one like costly request to a costly model so so it's already in that in that um, in that domain where it's not straightforward anymore like you know to decide like what's the right model so like the things are getting been quite close uh how do you define agi you must talk about this and think about it general intelligence what's the test that you put on it i mean obviously we have you know all kinds of the classic uh tests but what what do you think would be a reasonable definition of artificial general intelligence that we could all agree on or you might agree on well like you know in an in an enterprise like you know when you feel like you know there is there is a person today you know they have a role um you know to perform and and that role is now completely taken over by an ai agent i and, and 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 i think that's sort of what i you know what's our definition like you know within our context but i would actually also tell you like you know we 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 talk about big things and i think we we're, we're, we're far behind like you know in terms of like you know where real technology today is um hmm. you know people talk about having co-pilots i you know i feel like you know that's that's a big bar like you know as a word you know to describe the technology that we actually have in front of us today i mean like you know with this 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 is really powerful but there's a lot of work to be done i mean like you know yeah the copilot yeah. we're in the copilot phase and the next phase the will be i feel like it's not the we're not in the copilot phase like oh, yeah, I, maybe just developers are well, i i i think the 
like you know you are getting like maybe you know 10% of what an assistant would do for you you ah. like you're not getting copilot is actually a lot more like lot more stronger than like in an, an assistant like if you think about your own personal life you can have an assistant you can actually mm. have somebody who can replace you as a copilot uh i think the AI, ai technology is actually like not even at a place where they can do a better job than your ea um right now interesting so yeah i would agree with that yeah it feels like i like your definition one of the employees at work gets replaced and you don't know it's an ai i like that <laughs> yeah pick a random person in your organization replace them with an ai and when you talk to them in slack or you talk to them in you know github or whatever you talk to them in a google doc yeah you can't tell the difference that would be a pretty good one yeah i feels like we're making you know steady progress there but yeah it feels like we're in the co-pilot era but yeah you're right it, i never thought about it that way you wouldn't give them you wouldn't hand them control of the plane right now no not, you wouldn't yeah, go to the bathroom and let them fly the plane that's right <laughs> she'd be like i'm gonna stay here and watch yeah. you fly the plane <laughs> i'm not quite yeah. sure i trust yeah. you yeah but 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 at the same time like there's there's real value like you know like mm -hmm. you know i think you know even, even with clean like you know we we want to be that assistant you know mm -hmm. for everybody who works and i think we're bringing you know like a great deal of assistance uh but it's it's a long it's you know it's a long road like you know like you're yeah. going to be working on it for how, a while. how do you charge for it is, is it per seat is it by data source or do you just look yeah, at per, like per seat per seat 10 bucks yeah. a month or something 20 bucks a month yeah a little bit more uh a little but, more oh, okay <laughs> so, yum, yum. but the yeah but that yeah that's the model like you got can connect that yeah got it so if a thousand people a couple of hundred dollars a year per person it's probably if you mm -hmm. got and, and that's what you're going after mid-sized organizations need this it can't be like a 50 person company maybe not worth the the choose ain't worth the squeeze or are you going after the lar the mid size we 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 are focusing on companies from like a few hundred people all the way to the largest enterprises of the world the need is quite universal but like yeah from a focus perspective like you know we are like majority of our business is actually is in the enterprise and it takes a while to get all these services into the database right it's got to take a couple of weeks or a month to tweak everything and get it all plugged in right no, Glean is actually everything? Glean is actually very turnkey. That's actually one of the big requirements for when we started oh. our company was like you know we can bring you know Glean to let's say two thousand person enterprise you know the you know and like you know it's up and running you know within 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 a day. And, oh, that's pretty great. And um, yeah, because I think like the I, I I think one thing that helped in you know, that has helped is that like you know like the the new like you know SaaS based IT environments are actually quite accessible and and you can be up and running pretty quickly all right listen everybody check out glean you have glean.com what's your domain yeah glean.com all right good domain pretty great domain it's a million dollar do well maybe half million dollar domain right there in my estimation it's in the dictionary uh yeah. great job and everybody check out glean and we'll see you all next time bye bye thank you so much